My name is Sister Janet Tombima from St. Peter Clever High School. Today I have the privilege to take you through uh, forms of decolonization process. So we find that decolonization comes from two terms. We have the term D and colonization. So the term D uh, means uh, removal of something and the term colonization refers to the establishment of colonial rule. So therefore, as a whole, we can say that colonization is the removal of foreign rule or foreign domination, or they said remove foreign rule or foreign domination, which was established in African countries. Just to give a, a brief background uh, about decolonization, we find that decolonization uh, is a, a process that came about as a result of the colonial rule which was established after the agreement of Berlin Conference whereby Afri European nations were supposed to occupy those African colonies that they had discovered. So this brought as a result the, uh, these European powers established colonies in Africa and because of this therefore the uh, European rule which was established in Africa was kind of uh, harsh and ruthless on the African people. So we find that because of that, this made the Africans to react against the colonial rule. And therefore they organized themselves and uh, formed different nationalistic movements and also different resistance movements in order to counteract the colonial uh, rule, which was really uh, kind of oppressive to the African person. So we find that uh, because of that, therefore, uh, the Africans had to look at different forms on which how they were going to struggle back to get their freedom from the colonial government. So uh, the different African countries used different forms of decolonization. So we have, we have three forms of decolonization here. So let's look at the first form of decolonization. So you have decolonization here through armed struggle. So armed struggle refers to the uh, violent means uh, in acquiring independence. So you find that the African people uh, in different African colonies uh, use different methods depending on the nature, the nature of the colonial rule established. So you find that uh, like some of those African nations that use armed um, Strong African colonies or uh, that uh, the uh, preferred armed struggle. We find that most of those in most of those colonies, they are the colonial governments were kind of uh, exploitative and had established a white settlers economy. So the white settlers had also established. They had established development. So much development in those African colonies, and therefore. They were, they were comfortable and not, were not ready to leave the African colonies back to their European nations. And so for this matter, we find that the African nationalists, in order to achieve their goal of independence, they had to use some force in order to allow, the, uh, in order to en uh, enable the uh, European colonies or the European colonial governments to grant independence. So we have example of these African colonies where, whereby they use armed struggle. We have South Africa, Kenya, Zimbabwe, Mozambique, Angola, Congo, etc. Then uh, we have, let's move to the second form of decolonization that was used in African countries. Second form of decolonization we have decolonization through revolution. Revolution uh, refers to overthrowing, or uh, this refers to complete overthrowing of colonial government. So some of the African colonies, uh, because of the uh, violent uh, treatment they were given by the colonial government, they decided to kind, kindly overthrow, to completely overthrow the colonial government invasion then. So some of these African countries 
For instance, we have example, we have Egypt where they used revolution as a means of to decolonize. We have Zanzibar also uh, use a means of decolonization, which was uh, uh, a revolution means of decolonization. Then let's move to the third, the third form of decolonization process. We have constitutional means, constitutional means. Constitutional means is also uh, meaning the same as peaceful means of decolonization. So uh, some of the African countries prefer using peaceful ways of acquiring independence. This, uh, they prefer peaceful means of acquiring independence because probably in some of those uh, African countries, there are white settlers who are few and there were plantation uh, plantation colonies and hence the white settlers uh, did not really uh, do much development or develop those areas as much. Hence, they were ready to be colonized. Therefore, the African nationalists did not see the meaning of using force on those particular colonies, but instead they preferred using negotiations, they used dialogue, diplomacy, as some of the peaceful means of acquiring independence. So, however, we also find that uh, something to note that some of these countries were also under United Nations Trustship Council, where, whereby we find that uh, a country like Tanganyika, for instance, was earlier under, under the German colony, but since after the Second World War, Germany during the Second World War was defeated in the war and as a result lost her colonies. So uh, uh, Germany lost her colonies in Africa. Tanganyika was one of the colonies of Germany in Africa. Hence all those colonies that uh, uh, were there, those all, the colonies that were in Africa now became under, they were now under UNO Trustship Council or United Nations. And therefore United Nations had now to make sure that these countries were prepared for independence. These mandated, mandated territories were prepared for independence. We find that therefore, let's give examples of some of these African countries that gained their independence through peaceful means. We have Ghana. Ghana received her independence in 1957, Tanganyika 1961, Uganda 1962 and Nigeria 1960. So let's continue.